Let's take a look at the roadmap for the course, uh, what we'll be going through over these next eight weeks. We're going to start off with uh, the topic of memory and data. How do we organize data in the memory of a computer system? And then we're going to move on to how do we represent numbers? How do we encode different types of numbers, uh, both uh, integers and floating point numbers, in the uh, bit patterns that we can put in memory? Uh, we'll then turn our attention to how we encode instructions, that basically the machine code that the CPU will interpret to figure out what to do, uh, what data to find in memory, where to find it, and what operations uh, to perform on that data. This, uh, these instructions are normally represented in an assembly language uh, that's a little bit more machine readable than those ones and zeros. Uh, this is uh, one of the languages we'll be looking at. It's the x86 assembly language uh, for uh, the popular Intel processors that are in many of our computer systems today. However, any assembly language is uh, really going to be very similar. So we're hoping this is just a an example of one possible assembly language, uh, albeit a very common one. We'll then turn our attention to some uh, pr approaches to managing how we keep track of our programs and how they're executing, namely what procedures are being executed, where a procedure should return when it completes, and uh, that'll get us into the stack discipline that we use for representing that information. Uh, we'll then turn our attention to representing some more complex things in memory besides just numbers, uh, namely arrays of values and structs, uh, more complicated data structures uh, where multiple values are represented in one entity. Um, then we'll turn our attention to uh, memory and caches. So we'll be looking at memory from the point of view of performance, how a processor moves the data that it needs most often and uh, keeps it close to the CPU. By close, we mean in a faster access memory, uh, rather than the slower, larger memories uh, that we might also have available. Then we'll turn our attention to two important illusions that are common in modern computer systems. The first one is the concept of a process, namely a program that runs in parallel to a whole bunch of other processes. And we have to figure out how to give the illusion that each process has full control over the processor so that a programmer doesn't have to worry about how to hand off control to another process, how to save the state it might need. All these things are going to be taken care of automatically and this will help us touch on a little bit about how operating systems handle these uh, things for us uh, as programmers. The second illusion is virtual memory, namely the ability to think about a huge memory that uh, is available to each program, when in reality there's only a much smaller finite memory available uh, that is um, way, way smaller than the possible memory we may want to use. So this will get us into how do we uh, page different parts of memory from disk into the physical memory and uh, again deal with some operating systems issues. Finally, we'll close the course with uh, some issues in memory allocation, namely how do we decide where we put stuff in memory and how does that impact performance. And lastly, how do we deal with uh, higher level languages like Java, uh, which uh, abstract away a lot of those memory allocation issues from us. And we'll compare Java to C, which is a lower level language where we actually uh, consider each of those uh, memory allocations, uh, each one in turn, and have to free up memory when we're done using it, have to keep track of quite a few more things than in a higher level managed language like Java. So that's the roadmap for the course, and we'll, bring you, we'll be bringing you back to this slide over and over again at the beginning of each section uh, to give you a, an orientation of where we are as we progress through the course. Before we uh, start the first section, I'd like to uh, talk about three littler themes that are part of this course. The first one is representation. We'll be coming back to these themes over and over again. Representation is the issue of how do we represent things as zeros and ones. And by things or everything, we mean numbers, characters, instructions, uh, pointers, namely the addresses of that data in memory. And uh, 
we'll be talking about how we do an efficient job of representing all of these different types of data items. Uh, the second little theme is translation, uh, namely how do we go from language to language. You've heard me talk about a few already. I've mentioned Java as a high level language, C as a lower level language, uh, x86 assembly language as something being closer to the machine code of the CPU. Well, to do those translations, as with any language, we need to do word-by-word -word translations. We need to do translation of phrase structures and eventually the larger grammar of the language itself. So we're hoping that you know a language maybe like Java uh, as a programming language. You've seen that in an intro programming class or maybe you've had C already. Uh, so we'll be talking about those uh, languages and encountering a few other things in between like Java bytecodes as well. That'll come near the end of the course. Uh, lastly, the, the third theme is uh, control flow, namely how do computers orchestrate the many things they're doing and make it look like they're doing them all in parallel, when in fact, of course, they're only executing one instruction at a time. So how do we keep track of where we are when we call a method and then another and another and so on? Uh, what do we do when we hit a return statement? And how do we give the, the user the ability to run multiple programs seemingly at the same time? So these are the little themes we'll be coming back to again and again throughout the course.